In this updated tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to import and export text that you use in subtitles. There are two types of files you can use for import and one for export. We'll show you how to use them and the ramifications of each choice. Before we get rolling on that, I'd like to give you a sample of the clip. We have an interview and we have the dialogue captured in subtitles. We'll play a few seconds. You can see what we're up to. I'm a sophomore studying relational communications. I'm from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, uh, so not too far from here. Um, and I work in admissions, so I give tours and host students and that sort of stuff. Now, when we look at this clip, we notice that I have changed the formatting of different subtitles. The first one, we are a maroon with a black border. The second subtitle is actually a larger font and it's white with a black border. The third is green with a black border. Fourth one is purple with a white border. And the last one is a different size font and different type of font. And so we're going to look at what happens when we try to export and import in various formats. I'm going to click on the title room, subtitle room, that is the F12 key, and that gets me into my subtitle area on the left. And I see that I have the time code for each of the subtitles, and I have the subtitle text. Let's export this file. To export it, I click on the icon that's a second from the right that says export as SRT. Now one advantage of the SRT file is that it remembers the time code as well as the text and most of the style of the text. So we'll click on that and it asks what you want to call it. We'll simply call this my test and press save and we'll save the file. We can go ahead with the project all we want and, and edit the subtitles and save it again. But let's assume that we want to erase all of these. I'll highlight them, make them go away. And now we'll import them and see what we get coming back. I'm going to click on the file folder and it gives me two options. I can import a TXT, a text file or SRT. We're working with SRT first, so I'll click on My Test SRT, the information I've just saved. Click on Open, and now I have the time codes just like I had before. I have the text like I had before. Let's look and see what it did with the formatting. Uh, the first is maroon and black. The second is white and black. Third is green and black. Fourth is purple and black. And the last one is white and black. And it's, it preserves the font family. It preserves the size. But right now, the outline, it does not. It made them all black outline, which is not what we had before. So if you're going to export and then re-import, that's something to be aware of. I'm assuming that's not intentional, but that's where where things are at right now in PowerDirector 17, which is what I'm using. So that is one way in which you can export and import the subtitle text and the time codes in your project. Let's look at another option here. And what I'd like to do in this case is I'd like to import using a different format. We just imported using SRT. I'll delete that. Another way to import when I click on the file folder is a text document. Right now I have a text file called Gal Interview. So what I'm going to do is simply move this over to the lower right and then I'll pop up the screen which contains the text file. Here is my screen. I edited this in Notepad. And all it is is each line and ends with a hard carriage return. I have five lines in this file, which is called Gal Interview. So we'll minimize that again. Let's see what happens when we try to bring it in. Same file. I'll click on it. I'll say Open. 
Now I get an error message. It says some subtitles can't be imported because they exceed the length of the video. This error message is somewhat misleading. What's going on here? When you're importing a text file, which is what you may often have with an interview transcript, what happens is if there are no markers to go along with each line of the file, you get this error message. Let's fix that. Let's just manually put in a handful of markers. I'll just click in my timeline and put in, let's put in three for now. I've got three markers here and it gave me three sets of time code and su the subtitle text is blank because all I did was put the markers in. Let's try to import it now. I'll import the uh, gal interview like I was going to do a moment ago. Click on open. It says it will replace the text. You want to continue? Sure. I'll click on OK. Now it imported them, but now I get another error message the same as before. They exceed the length of the video. Why? Because this particular text file had five lines and I only had three markers. And so when the number of markers is not equal to the number of lines, then you'll get this error message. I'll click on OK. Let's add two more markers. In fact, uh, I'm going to delete these again. And let's put in five. Here are five. Oh, let's put in six for fun. OK, now I have six markers. Let's import my file, which contains five lines again, called Gal Interview. Click on Open, and it say it will replace. And it worked. It assigned a text to each of the markers and the one that was empty, it did nothing with it. So that one is still blank. So if you're going to import a text file, especially if, as you have this from some kind of transcript of your video, you can do it very easily in any kind of word processor. It doesn't matter. Just ask to end in TXT and be a text style document. Uh, you must have a marker for each of the lines or it will give an error message and stop wherever the markers end. So that's a little bit about importing and exporting. The big difference is SRT is nicer uh, because it has your time codes associated with each of the subtitles, but in many cases it's a lot easier to grab some text from a text file and then put the markers in manually. And once that you have them in, you can adjust the length of them, the position of any of them, so you can modify them to your heart's content on the subtitle track in PowerDirector.